obviously my RSL bars have to go on my most expensive enduro rig and you guys might have seen that on my channel before and that's right it's going on the trek marlin hello everyone and welcome back to the channel my name is talali pop and i just bought a bunch of carbon fiber handlebars for my mountain bikes so in this video i'm going to go over all three of these new handlebars and compare them with one another as well as just show you the specs the weight the prices basically everything you need to know in case you are looking into buying some new bars or are just curious about some Trek or Bontrager branded handlebars. And I will be installing each of these on my various mountain bikes in this video and giving an initial review on them, but I will go more in detail on how I like them in future videos. So as you can see here, we have three different bars and I have arranged them from least expensive to most expensive. So we have the Bontrager Line Pro 35 MTB handlebar, which currently costs 189 US dollars. And then we have the Bontrager Kovi XXX 35 MTB handlebar, which is actually also priced at $189, so the exact same price. But lastly, we have the most expensive handlebar that Trek makes, which is the Bontrager RSL MTB integrated handlebar and stem combination. And I am extremely excited about that one. But first things first, let's get all of these unboxed and I can give you my initial impressions on these bars. My name is all over this one <laughs> because my coworkers kind of wrote it on there. Just wow, I really love the look of this one so far. So I'm gonna cut out these zip ties. There we go. So the first bar we're looking at is the Line Pro 35. This is basically an all mountain trail carbon fiber handlebar. It's actually a fairly high end handlebar because Trek does spec this stock on a lot of their high end mountain bikes. It's on the highest end Fuel EX models like the Fuel X 9.9. It's on uh, the highest end Remedy model, the Trek Remedy 9.8, a bike that I have personally. So I have ridden this uh, handlebar before, but I really wanted to kind of get it on its own and try it on some other bikes without having to take it off of my Remedy. So this handlebar currently is 820 millimeters wide and it weighs 243 grams. You can see that on the tag here and it has a 27.5 millimeter rise and it does have that extra wide 35 millimeter clamp which is really nice because it makes the bar stronger without sacrificing too much in weight savings. You have all the tick marks on the side as well for cutting it down to a certain length if you prefer and overall just a nice looking handlebar. It has the logo in the front, uh, more of a stealth look for sure. I really do love the gloss look of this carbon. Uh, it's almost like, it's almost a black color, but it's just a very dark gray. So I'll leave that one here while I unbox the next one, which is significantly lighter in weight. Uh, this is the Bontrager Kobe XXX. So this one is more designed for cross country bikes and cross country racing bikes at that. So it comes stock at 720 millimeters wide. And wow, you can see it's significantly uh, less wide than the Line Pro one right there but this one definitely has a more matte finish to it. Still has the tick marks on the side and all of the information on the left-hand side of the bar right there. Still has that 35 millimeter clamp, even though it's a cross country bar because it doesn't sacrifice too much in weight. And you can definitely tell this handlebar feels so insanely light. It basically feels like I'm holding like a piece of paper or something, it's, it's pretty crazy. So the official weight on that one in comparison is 130 grams. So exactly 113 grams lighter almost half the weight of this one, which is pretty crazy. Another more stealth looking handlebar. Bontrager does like making a lot of stealth looking things. I do wish the XXX was uh, in red like it is on some bars, but it's, it's a nice matte finish. And before I open the final RSL handlebar, I do want to just throw in a normal aluminum handlebar. This one is actually a specialized handlebar, but I had it laying around and this one was originally 800 millimeters, but it has been cut down to 750 millimeters and the original weight was 370 grams. So about hundred grams more than this one, 200 more than this one. And you can feel it, this feels like a pretty normal handlebar. This one definitely feels lighter, not by a lot, but it does feel lighter for sure. And then this one just feels insane. This is crazy light. Like I did not expect it to be that light when I ordered it. I know you guys can't really feel these handlebars in person. So the best I can do is kind of give a little tap. <laughs> so you can tell that's more of an aluminum uh, feel right there. And then more of like a composite plastic feel. 
Yeah, these, these basically sound the same. All right, so I got the other handlebars out of the way for this one because it deserves its own space. And RSL, as you can see on the box, stands for Race Shop Limited. Uh, it's just a Trek specific thing that stands for their highest end uh, parts, essentially. So it is, once again, a Bond Trigger uh, handlebar, which is just Trek's in-house brand. Um, so you can see some of that branding on the side. But this bar is going to be 820 millimeters wide. It has a 27.5 millimeter rise and a 45 millimeter stem length. But let's get it open right now. I'm very, very excited to see this. Ooh, and wow. So Trek is actually specking this bar on some of their bikes. Let me pull it out of here. So the new 2022 Trek Slash models do come with this handlebar uh, with a 35 millimeter stem length. I'm going to kind of take it out of this packaging right there very carefully. Wow, it is insanely light as you should expect. Has a very nice RSL logo on the left side of the handlebar and a Race Shop Limited logo on the right side uh, facing towards you. And you have some other Bond Trigger branding here and there. Of course, you have the lines. These lines are a lot harder to see because they're darker, but I kind of like that, so it's not really showing up. It has uh, all of the Race Shop Limited information on the left there. Let me open this box right here and see what that is. So in here, it seems like we have some other stem components, which are made out of aluminum. You have to insert one of these in there, either this one or that one, depending on... I think this one is the knock block specific adapter, I suppose you could say. And this one's just like, if you want to put it on a bike that does not have knock block on it. And for those of you who do not know, knock block is just a Trek proprietary system that prevents the, the fork from hitting the frame. And it does that by limiting the range of the stem. All right, so here are all the handlebars in one place if you want to take a look at them and kind of see how they look in comparison to one another. So all of these three carbon handlebars do use Trex OCLV Carbon, which is basically just their name for their carbon fiber that they use on all of their frames and all that stuff as well. But one last thing I'll mention here is that if you're worried about the price of this RSL bar being outrageous, it definitely is, but it does make some sense because if you choose to get one of these high-end handlebars for around $190 and then get a high-end stem like a Kobe Pro or a Line Pro from Bontrager, which is around $120, the total price ends up being around $310 and you actually get a heavier setup than the RSL and no carbon stem. So in reality, the RSL is not that bad of a deal, but it definitely is a luxury product. All right, so now I'm going to show some time-lapse videos of me installing each of these bars, and then I'll show some initial test riding videos and my ride impressions, starting with the Line Pro 35 on my new Trek Fuelix 9.7, which is a carbon fiber bike. And as you can see in these before and after pictures, it's not a huge change really, but I definitely love the look of that gloss carbon on this bike over the aluminum bars that were on it before. And I think it really just helps the bike look a lot cooler and it will make the handlebar stronger as well. And here's some more footage of it in the sunlight so you can see it a little bit better. Okay, so the first thing I noticed right away is how wide these are. <laughs> uh, these are 820 millimeters wide. So a lot wider than I'm used to. Obviously they're that wide so you can cut them down. I just love the look of these bars especially with this uh, bike frame right here. I haven't really introduced this bike on my channel too much, but yeah, it definitely looks really nice and matches the, the gray carbon on this bike pretty well. Obviously this is a gloss handlebar, which I actually really like uh, over the matte ones. So I'm not gonna take it out on a trail right now, but I might do that in the future just to test it out. They feel pretty stiff. They are definitely lighter than the ones I had on this bike before. Whew. And next we have the Kovi XXX handlebar on my Pro Calibre 9.6. It's such a lightweight bar that just feels flimsy almost, even though it's likely stronger than the heavier aluminum bars that were on it before. And once again, here are some before and after picks. And in this case, especially with the new Kobe Pro stem I have on there, I think the bike just looks great. The handlebar has that sleek matte finish on it and it definitely looks very nice and makes the bike a bit more high-end for sure. And of course, here is another video of it in the sunlight so you can see that raw carbon look. All right. <laughs> okay. 
Wow guys, I am definitely loving the look of this handlebar. It looks so much better than that aluminum bar that came stock on this bike. I think this carbon bar really suits the Pro Calibre. It is a cross-country race bike, full carbon fiber. So it deserves that carbon fiber bar. And the matte carbon kind of matches the logo on the top tube here. And then the negative 13 degree rise stem, it just looks perfect right now. Now guys, I know you're probably wondering, I threw the most expensive cross-country handlebars that Trek makes on my cross-country race bike. I put the carbon fiber trail handlebars on my trail bike. So obviously my RSL bars have to go on my most expensive enduro rig. And you guys might've seen that on my channel before. And that's right, it's going on the Trek Marlin, the Trek Marlin 7. This is a beautiful bike, the best bike that Trek has ever made. So yes, I actually did that. I put the RSL bars on my beautiful Trek Marlin 7. I'm obsessed with Marlins, obviously, as you know, if you watch my channel. So only the best for my entry-level hardtails. <laughs> I guess that's a bit of an early April Fool's joke, except I'm not really joking. <laughs> All right, guys. <laughs> Here is the RSL handlebar on my Trek Marlin 7. I haven't really revealed this bike either on my channel yet. I haven't had time, but this is a 2020 Trek Marlin 7. This handlebar is basically half the price of this bike <laughs> which is pretty funny but it definitely feels pretty strong for what it is for how lightweight this handlebar is and it also just looks super cool Ooh. but i'm probably going to end up throwing this handlebar on the fuel ex as well or some other <laughs> trail bike not uh this cross-country hardtail it feels pretty good but yeah, that's it for my initial thoughts on this one. So I'll also show some more sick images I took of the bike looking awesome in the sunlight. But yeah, that's basically it for this handlebar video. I just wanted to give uh, kind of my initial impressions and overviews on these bars in case you're wondering what they kind of look like on video and in comparison to one another. But I will have some better ride impressions in the future, hopefully. For now, though, thank you all so much for watching and remember to keep biking out there.